Welcome, Shoe Addicts. It's Shanshel Sharif. Thank you for joining me today. Today is going to be a special review because I have been getting quite a few emails. Their main concern was, what do I get started? Maybe you're a shoe designer that wants to be creating your portfolio, getting together some samples and prototypes. The review that I'm doing today is on Steve Madden's story. He recently, as of 2017, he released a documentary which is titled Mad Man, The Steve Madden Story. I'm gonna give you some information, some insight into what he talks about in his documentary. If you'll be interested, stay tuned, take a look at the trailer, and I'll be right back. You have a collect call from an inmate at Coleman Correctional Facility. This is Steve Madden. So tell me what you know about Steve Madden, the actual guy. Shoes. Shoes. The shoe guy. Those funny fashion ads of the big heads and the big shoes. He was in that movie, Wolf of Wall Street. Steve Madden. <laughs> Let's start. To my family, being creative was being able to fix a television. So in an effort to straighten me out, my dad said I had to go to work. So I got a job in a shoe store. This is where I learned the shoe business. I used to work here. A girl would come in and you were part of designing their lifestyle and their wardrobe. This is cute too, Fire. And I got obsessed with shoes. I quit one day, put $1,100 in the bank, and went to work in my own business. I knew that I had to come up with a hit. Made a shoe that was for a market that wasn't being served. We called it the Mary Lou. It was truly young fashion. Got this call from my childhood pal. Danny said, we're looking for companies to raise money for. Said he's got this genius behind his company named Jordan. Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort, the wolf of Wall Street. We'll raise you the money you need to build a business. I became part of the scheme. Because I didn't care about anything but building the business. And then the whole thing came crashing down. And there was nothing I could do at that point. It's some sort of neurotic drive. Here's what we're doing. My work and my life are one. You can't separate them. It was an older industry. We disrupted it. My greatest fear was going to prison. The ball dropped, the rural stopped. You can't run a business from prison. Mackerel was the currency. Mackerel, fish, that was the currency. I became the mackerel king. He wasn't like a weekend warrior. He'd be face down a lot of places. He was a full-time barbarian. That's the guy I want to hang out with. Oi, oi, oi. Our sales started plumbing. It was worse than I thought. You blindsided us. When it all costs, there are costs. I'm completely insane. <laughs> his shoes before you even knew who he was and I think that's an interesting take on getting started in the shoe business a lot of people think that you should start from people knowing your face or maybe following your brand and again we have to keep in mind that his start came in the 90s and he was about getting product to the customer so his focal point wasn't necessarily himself he focused on his customer and what drives sales. I mean, pretty simple. It makes a lot of sense, but I think it's sometimes short-sighted and not really looked at with uh, a microscope. You should, you should be understanding who your customer is or who your... What I like that I saw in his documentary was that he took you through his production phase. Not necessarily the design phase, but he took you through his production, which I think designs are pretty much, you know, suited to the designer or suited to the audience or suited to your client. From there, then you have to run tests. There are lots of quality control tests that you have to check for. You know, it's comfortable. Can you walk in and can it get you around? So that all happens with the production and fittings. He speaks about this. He takes you step by step, I mean legitimately takes you through step by step process of what it is to get his shoes from his concept to creation. Going to the factory, trying out the prototype, sampling it on the floor. Uh, it could be at his store, but before he had his own store, he would take it to department stores, retail stores, boutiques, anybody that would take him. And he would just try it out and see what customers would pick up see if customers are interested in buying. Okay. Did yeah. this sell? If this didn't sell, either do we need to scratch it? Does it need to be edited? Maybe we need to make the heel a chunky heel instead of a stiletto heel. Maybe the, the toe cap should be an open toe or maybe a peep toe. He, you know, this is really what it's about. What's working, what's selling? Because 
people might like it, but if they don't love it, they're not going to buy it. Now, that part is what really made me give the, the documentary a five-star review. The storytelling, he had amazing storytelling, and also the steps that he gives to his success. He is a billion-dollar man, ladies and gentlemen. I think that it's worth your time to go and take a look at his documentary. So check it out, uh, stevemadden.com. You can see the documentary there as well, but I caught mine on Netflix. If you want to see more reviews on shoe documentary, fashion documentary, there's also one about Manila Blahnik that I really want to do. There's one about Tinker with Michael Jordan that I want to do. So if you're interested in hearing more about those, like I said, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. All right, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it and I will see you soon. I wanna put you in my life. Your head smell like a tropic, your body look nice. Wanna fuck